Welcome back to the Tradesman Garage. I'm Justin, and today I'm going to show you how to make a cornhole board set with a scoreboard drink holder combo using a Cricut Maker or any type of vinyl cutting machine, a vinyl stain and peel technique. Let's check it out. So for this new method, we're going to be making a big sticker and then staining over it, removing that sticker, allowing the underside color to act as our logo or picture that we want to expose. So just a disclaimer here, this video doesn't show how to make the frames of the boards or the tops. Uh, if you'd like to see that, that's in my How to Make uh, American Flag Cornhole Boards video. That's going to be my cornhole boards playlist on my page. Also be at the end of the video for you guys to see. Uh, I'll drop a link in the description as well. So for here, I'm using Oracle 631 removable vinyl. Got it off Amazon for about 50 bucks, I think for 150 feet of it. So it's pretty cheap and it works really well for what I'm using it for. I attach that to my light cutting mat and there we go. Once I printed out the design that I want, I start the weeding process. It's where I take all the excess pieces of vinyl off of the mat, and then I will apply a transfer tape or a clear tape over the top so I can take that image from the backer of this paper and then apply it to my surface. Now the vinyl cutter I'm using is called a Cricut Maker. Uh, we picked it up at a craft store. It works out really well. The only problem with it is it can only cut up to 12 inches wide. So for the bigger pieces like the one you're seeing here, I had to put it on two separate sheets, basically split that image in half and then join those two pieces together, which you'll see here in just a second. Once we have the design printed out, we attach that to the board and then slowly peel back that transfer paper. Uh, if you have a very sticky version of that, it might try to pull up your logo design below it. So just take your time, be very careful in pulling that back and apply as much pressure to the creases as possible. Next, we go over to our oversized logo. So for this, typically you would use a really big vinyl cutter, but I don't have that. So I use this small one and I join the pieces together. Uh, a method that I saw on YouTube, you can basically just search how to make a big logo with a Cricut machine. There's a couple of people on here that have that pretty much down packed. And I kind of just followed a couple of different videos till I figured it out and uh, ended up working pretty well. Just join the two pieces together and go. So now I'm going to make the scoreboard. Uh, first, I'm going to cut this four by four foot sheet down to uh, a more manageable size. So I'm going to slice that in half and uh, work with the two foot wide board. Basically here, we're going to keep the four foot length, but we're going to just chop it down into smaller pieces. So for the two long runners for the actual scoreboard, we're going to go nine and a half inches wide and snag two pieces for that one. And then once we move over to get the actual cup holder and base for that cup holder, we're going to re-rip that down to four inches. Once we've got those all cut and ripped, cut them down to length. The four inch wide piece that you just cut, cut it down to nine and a half and do a second piece as well. This will be the top and the bottom of the cup holder. Additionally, you're going to need about a uh, inch and a half, maybe two inch wide small piece to be a separator for these two pieces that we're working with now but uh, we're gonna take a three inch hole saw or you can use a drill bit and a small jigsaw and you know cut your way around it but since I got a hole saw handy I'm just gonna go ahead and use that so I use the jigsaw to round off the edges and then sand them down real quick then I'll use the hole saw and cut about a half an inch from either side of the holder. And this is only gonna be cut on one of those two pieces that you cut to size. So the top piece is the only one that will have the holes. Next we'll move over just to create a handle and a footprint for the scoreboard. Now these plans were originally made by somebody online, I believe it was Rogue Engineer. Uh, I'll find the link to the actual web page where I found these plans. I found these plans a long time ago. 
Uh, I've kind of modified them myself a little bit to my liking, uh, but the idea is pretty much the same as what he started with. So I'll drop that down in the uh, description below. Here, uh, I actually just got this router table and it's not set up properly. So I was having a tough time actually getting it to work. Really what I wanted to do is just clean the edges up a little bit. Uh, it's not perfect by any means. I, I understand that this is not the correct way to be using a uh, non-bearinged bit, but I just wanted to clean it up just a hair. Once I did that, I hit everything with a quarter inch round over bit and then sanded everything down to 120 grit uh, sandpaper. Just trying to sand it down, get any rough spots and any markings off that we don't want. Now I'm going to use a 2x4, cut it down to 15 inch lengths for the legs. So we're going to get four of those. And then the spacers in between are going to be 18 inches. For the legs, we'll cut those down to actual length towards the end of the video uh, once we get our height spacing set correctly. Now this portion, I'm just finding the center of the board from end to end, and I'm also gonna use that same center point and go down from the top of the board. Uh, then I'll use a compass to draw the circle around. If you don't have any of these tools, you can just use uh, something round in the shop, a Coke can, uh, really anything, the bottom of a cup. Just round out that side, and then we're gonna cut those tips off and sand them down smooth. Now, in lieu of using my jigsaw, I used my miter saw just to cut off the corners. Make sure you hold the board down so it doesn't bounce around if you use it this way. After that, use my bench top sander and we'll sand it down smooth, as close to that circle that we drew earlier as possible. Now, if you don't have a sander like this, you can just use a little palm sander, ram, random orbital sander, uh, clamp it to the bench and smooth it down as close to that line as you possibly can. After that, we're gonna stain all uh, four of the legs and the two braces and then let them sit overnight to dry. Now for the scoreboard, I went back to the Cricut machine and cut out a bunch of numbers, zero through 21. Uh, I kind of figured the dimensions here and made each number about an inch and a half in size. Uh, and then I just spaced them out accordingly. I kind of had to do all that manually by hand, but. Once you got those down, you're pretty much just putting stickers on the board in a straight line. Once they're all straight, uh, you'll begin staining them over, but you wanna make sure every little crack is pressed down to the board and sealed as tight as possible. You can achieve the same outcome here using just normal stickers. You can get a sticker kit on Amazon, uh, or you could even use some painter's tape and cut out each individual number. That's kind of something that I did a long time ago as a test piece to see how, uh, how this method would work. But I found out that the vinyl is the best way to go. And now that I got a, you know, a Cricut, it, it makes it just 10 times faster. And this process is so much smoother. So once it's been stained, peel all those pieces off and let them dry overnight. The next day I came back and applied some coats of poly and in between the coats uh, I sanded down with 220 grit sandpaper and then applied a, another coat and another coat. For the legs I only did about two coats and for the tops of the boards uh, I only had to do maybe two or three to get the right finish that I was looking for. Now they don't make this spar urethane anymore so I had to switch over to Minwax Helmsman. Uh, indoor outdoor finish uh, it's not as good as this version but I mean it does the trick too uh, then I move over to my scoreboard put down some frog tape and then use my Craig uh, pinhole jig to put just a couple of holes on either side of the numbers and then I knocked all the little rough spots down uh, with some 120 grit sandpaper uh, and then went right back over it with just a little bit of stain and then I reapplied my finish uh, just to cover it up and give it a good coating. As that other side was drying, I applied my glue to the cup holder and then just found a spot on the board that I liked. I, I went to about uh, a third from the top, applied some pressure, and then Brad nailed it from the back side. Brad nailing it, I turned it over and hit all the brads down with a hammer to make it flush. Wiped out any squeeze out that was there and then applied some clamps to hold it in place. 
and then wiped out the rest of that squeeze out and let it dry for about 20 minutes. After that, I attached the two scoreboard pieces together with half inch hinges. They're about a half an inch wide. I screwed those down on the top, about an inch from each end of the board. After that, I went back to the board, sanded the bottoms down and prepped them for stain. Stained them over just enough to where they'll get you know a good color so you can see them from each angle. I'm not really worried about the bottoms at this point and I let those dry overnight. Next, I came back to this new urethane that we're using. It's really sticky and tacky. It's nothing like what I was using before, but it does do the trick. It just takes a little bit longer for it to dry. I put about two to three coats on the underside of these. And then I moved over to drilling the holes out for the legs. Drilled the holes out first, and then I clamped those to the boards, used a two by four spacer for the front and a small little about quarter inch shim for the bottom, just to keep them off the face of the cornhole board itself. Then I went through and tightened the legs down, made sure they were all set, removed the legs, and then used a, a stack of blocks you can use a paint can anything really you're just trying to get the top of the front of the board to sit at 12 inches and then we'll cut the bottoms of the legs off and attach the middle piece that was 18 inches for that middle piece we actually ended up shimming it down about an eighth of an inch just to get that space right I clamped them together screwed them into place and we were done so there you have it. That's how you make cornhole boards with a Cricut maker for your designs, as well as that's how you create a standing scoreboard and drink holder set. I'll drop all the links in the description below for all the plans that I found and uh, all the supplies that I used. Let me know in the comments section below what you thought, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, and uh, subscribe for the next big video that's coming up next. We'll see you next time on the Tradesman Garage.